coming to you every Monday and Thursday for a reflection from the book The Language of Letting Go. I never know what I'm going to read. I only know the title and that keeps it exciting. Reading it for the first time. I hear a little thunder in the background so hopefully it will rain and you'll get to see some rain behind me. I am undercover so we're going to be good. Let's see what page we are on today. I know some of you bought the book. Today we are on page 133. The title of it is Living Our Lives. Don't stop living your life. So often when a problem occurs inside or around us, we revert to thinking that if we put our life on hold, we can po positively contribute to the solution. If a relationship isn't working, if we face a difficult decision, if we're feeling depressed, we may put our life on hold and torment ourselves with obsessive thoughts. Abandoning our life or routines contributes to the problem and delays us from finding the solution. Frequently, the solution comes when we let go enough to let to live our life, return to our routine, and stop obsessing about the problem. Okay, when we let go, live our life, return to our routine, and stop obsessing about the problem. Sometimes, even if we don't feel like we have let go or can let go, we can act as if we have. And that will help bring about the letting go we desire. You don't have to give up your power to problems. You can take your focus off your problem and direct it to your life. Trusting that doing so will bring you closer to a solution. All right, very short reflection. And I'm going to read the little prayer at the end. Today I will go on living my life and tending to my routine. I will decide as often as I need to to stop obsessing about whatever is bothering me. If I don't feel like letting go of a particular thing, I will act as if I have to let go of it until my feelings match my behavior. Very good. All right, now we're going to go back. We're going to unpack it a little bit and uh, see what more we could add to this today. Living our lives. Uh, I love the title. Uh, we only have one life to live, really. And those of us that are Christians, we know that our life depends on God for everything. Everything. We depend on God for everything. Uh, those of you that have gone through 12-step programs, uh, you know one of the things they emphasize is having a higher power. And I don't know where my life would be had I not given my life over to God. And that is a very important step in, in health and in recovery. Whatever you're recovering from, whatever addiction you're recovering from. This book deals with codependency and there are so many issues that are attached to codependency. So many terrible relationship dynamics because of codependency. And that is why I decided to do Facebook Lives on these reflections because if you could get your codependency issues under control, and that's men and women, it's not just women, uh, you could solve a lot of your own problems. You really can. All right, so let's start looking at the details of this reflection. She starts off by saying, don't stop living your life. All right, what she was referring to is, uh, in life we're going through a process and things get tough, things get rough, and then all of a sudden we put ourselves on the back burner 
and we're trying to fix everybody else. Codependents are known for that, fixing everybody else except themselves. And then you stop living. No bueno, no good. Then she goes on to say, so often when a problem occurs inside or around us, we revert to thinking that if we put our life on hold, we can pos positively contribute to the solution. Okay, that is a thought that some people have. If they stop living, if they put themselves last, if they stop being selfish, like they're being told by everybody around them, uh, then, then the problems will get fixed. And then we think that's a solution. That's not the solution. If a relationship isn't working, if we face a difficult decision, if we're feeling depressed, we may put our life on hold and torment ourselves with obsessive thoughts. Okay. I totally believe that many people do that. I have done that. Uh, you know, I've had, I've been on this journey the past seven years where I separated from my husband and then eventually got divorced. Took a long time, long time to get divorced. And it's been a process and it's been a healing journey. And many things have happened in the past seven years. But I am definitely in a much better place and there have been times in this journey where I've had obsessive thoughts. What if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? Or I wish I would have or whatever. Well, what, guess what that does? It stops me from living my life because I'm obsessing over things I cannot change, okay? Uh, mainly related to my children. I have three children. Two are not in my life, one is. And that's a very painful reality that I have to face every day and live with. And there's many reasons why that is. Uh, and that, that right there was the reason I became a life coach. The parental alienation, the children not being in my life after I was so dedicated homeschooled them for 13 years and uh, when I stepped back and I looked at the whole picture of my life quote married life which is just remember guys it's only some chapters of my life I had a life before marriage I've had a life after marriage so those are, those are just chapters in my life but when I look back uh, what really drove me to open up this business was the parental alienation and never ever wanting another mother or father to experience the pain that goes with parental alienation. For those of you that don't know what that is, that is when uh, in many divorce cases the one parent turns the children against the other one and there is no friendship, they, they are not amicable, uh, the kids suffer and it's kind of like a punishment to the other parent and it's a very sad thing and I live that. That's uh, one of my realities. So I would say a lot of my obsessive thoughts have been about how can I get my children back? What can I do? Uh, but up until now, everything I've done uh, has been to bring peace and to restore relationship. And I can't control the outcome. I can't control what they do. I can't control what happens. Uh, but guess what? all those years or months or weeks however long i've been obsessing about that and i still do at times much less than i used to i put my life on hold again and nothing got resolved so what did that do for me nothing right uh your time is better spent praying than having obsessive thoughts about how you wish things were different how you wish things could change what can you do what Oh my, it's me. I got to do something. No. It takes two people to have a relationship. Yes, you have a part, but you cannot do it all. It's not your responsibility to change other people. Then she goes on to say, abandoning our life or routines contributes to the problem and delays us from finding the solution. I'm going to repeat that. Abandoning our life or routines contributes to the problem and delays us from finding the solution. When our mind is spinning, spinning and spinning, trying to solve a problem that is so painful to you, 
and you just can't do it. Doesn't matter what you do, you could get a life coach, you could get a counselor, a therapist, a psychologist, and you still can't fix the problem. That's because it's not your job to fix it. Some things you have to leave in the hands of God and let time heal people, let them have time to change, if they choose to change, and pray for them and have hope. God says faith, hope, and love. Always have faith, always have love, always have hope that things could change. Uh, but one thing that I like to do is when I have to make big decisions is look at the track record that these people have. Talking about the people who hurt you. Look at their track record. Look at their history. Never forget history because you will be bound to repeat it. Look at their history and where have they shown interest in personal development? Where have they shown interest in your life? Where have they shown interest in healing? If the answer is zero, then right there, epiphany, uh, you really should totally take your hands off of it, pray for them, and go on with your life. You really do have to. They are not interested. They might change, they might not. But in the meantime, don't lose your life over it. Uh, remember, we still have a responsibility to fulfill God's purpose in our life on this earth. And though you might have had some chapters in your life that were difficult, painful, shameful, uh, those were just chapters in your book, in your story. They are not your whole story. Um, when I first got separated and divorced, I just thought this whole problem was my whole life. And it took me a while, you know, thanks to good coaches I've had and therapists that I've had family and friends that are supportive uh, that know my life is much more than just those chapters in my life. So go back to living your life, go back to your routine and stop obsessing about the problem. Sometimes even if we don't feel like we have to let go or can let go, we can act as if we have and that will bring about the letting go we desire. All right, imagine it. Imagine that you're letting go. Imagine that uh, things will be better one day, but right now they're not, and you have to focus on your life right now. Imagine whatever you need to imagine to get you to a place of healing, to get you to move forward, to get you to, to not be stuck, and just having obsessive thoughts. Write down the strategies, the tools that help you. And I, I will say that's where a life coach, a therapist comes in very handy because they're standing on the outside looking in on your life. They have many tools in their belt, uh, you know, in their toolbox. They have many strategies, not only that, life experience and experience with clients that they could really, really help. If you find a good one, they could really help you. Uh, by the way, the, the coaching that I love to do, I do all forms of coaching, but my favorite form of coaching is to help Christians that have been in emotional, psychological, and spiritual abuse. That's, that's, where, that's where I shine. Uh, but, you know, personal development all around, making you a better person, uh, helping you to live your life happy, helping you with relationships and uh, whatever life goals you have. So please check out my website if you haven't already. It's www.mymomentslc, the letters LC, which stand for lifecoaching.com. All right. You don't have to give up your power to problems. You can take your focus off your problem and direct it to your life, trusting that doing so will bring you closer to a solution. Yes, you know, I hope that when you guys get to the end of your life, you don't look back and have regrets and say, man, all those years that I stressed about that problem that in the end I couldn't do anything about, all those years that I worried, all those years that I was fearful because of A, B, C, and B, 
man, I wish I could go back and change that. I know I do. I have regrets. I have many regrets. And I will talk about those regrets as we progress, you know, with these Facebook Lives. Um, I try to be very open and transparent because none of us have it all together. Nobody. Not even like coaches. Okay? Um, so try to get to the end of your life with as least regrets as possible. And I think if you give yourself the love that you need, the attention that you need, the focus that you need, and heal, you know, through therapy, through coaching, through self-help books, uh, the Bible, obviously, God helping you uh, heal, which is very important to have God in your life, uh, you won't be so focused on what's going wrong in your life. You will be more focused on your life doing what you need to do being responsible always having faith hope and love and being proactive in your own life i love this this was really good living our own lives now here's her prayer at the end today i will go on living my life and tending to my routine I will decide as often as I need to to stop obsessing about whatever is bothering me. If I don't feel like letting go of a particular thing, I will act as if I have let go of it until my feelings match my behavior. That is so good. You know, this, this little prayer right here on page 133, this little prayer right here, to repeat that every morning write it down write it down that's what I do when I find something that's really helpful I write it down and uh, somewhere where I remember oh there comes the rain I love the sound of rain and I look at it and I, I repeat it to myself just like affirmations little prayers that I like so I'm going to repeat it in case you want to write it down today I will go on living my life and tending to my routine I will decide as often as I need to to stop obsessing about whatever is bothering me. If I don't feel like letting go of a particular thing, I will act as if I will let go of it until my feelings match my behavior. Okay, I do want to uh, mention one thing here. She mentioned I will go on living my life and tending to my routine. What if you don't have a routine? You know, what if you're so depressed that... Uh, it takes everything in you just to get out of bed and get a shower that day. And if you get out of bed and you get a shower that day and you actually walk around the house, that's the best you can do. You know, everybody's in a different place in their life. So I will tell you that uh, what has helped me with routine is to have a vision board. I do private one-on-one -on -one workshops about vision boards for people. I also do vision board workshops in groups. Please visit my website to see details about that. Uh, but having a vision board could be just what the doctor ordered. Something visual for you to look at every day to help you with your routine. What you choose to do every day. And uh, there's an acronym that I have that I love. And it's actually right in the middle of my vision board. And it's the word POWERS. P-O-W-E-R-S. I wrote this acronym myself for my life. And these are things that I want to do every day. This helps me to have a routine, like she's talking about. P stands for prayer. So every day I pray. Oh my goodness. Alright, power. P stands for prayer. O stands for organizing. W stands for writing. Because when you write, you get to stretch yourself. That's part of being creative. P stands for exercise, every day I exercise. R stands for reading, every day I read. And to learn and to continue growing in knowledge and wisdom. And then S stands for sighting. You should have time every day where there's no noise in the background. Like this wonderful sound of rain. Oh, I could sit here forever. Just enjoy the sound. So you need silence every day, and I schedule 30 minutes of silence 
where I don't have no music on the background, no podcast, no YouTube video, no nothing. Just silence. It's meant to be with yourself in silence. It's a beautiful thing that really actually activates your creativity and helps you to calm down and just assimilate things better. And yeah, wonderful. Do it. It works for you. Write your own acronym. All right, this has been great. Let's see what the title is for Monday. By the way, if you did not hear Mon- this past Monday's episode, it was entitled title Boundaries. It was very good. So go back and go on Facebook to look at it. I'm using it on my website. It's called Boundaries. The one before that was Self-Love, and that was excellent as well. All right, so the one on Monday is going to be Solving Problems. It's going to be good. Let me put my little face. Got a little magnet here. Thank you all for joining me. I will see you on Monday. Have a beautiful day. And I'm going to sit up my chair over here and relax and do the rain for a while. God bless. Bye.